<laughs> we once again are very thankful to be with all of you tonight, for you to be present here with us. Amen. Those of you who have joined on live stream, speaking for myself, and I'm sure for a number of you also, we don't take occasions like this for granted and just get used to them, so to speak. They're very precious times. Amen. We're continuing, and this will be our 15th exposition of the book of Jude. We're going to be in verse, verse 21 tonight. As you might expect, Jude's, Jude's going to end on a high note. He and we're in the world, the low notes are on the bottom. But see, in the kingdom, you get the low note, you get that first, and you end on a high note. <laughs> now, Jude spent some time, a considerable amount of time, wasn't it, exposing the nature of these men that crept in unawares. There's quite a, quite a bit of uh, word and instruction on those men that he gave. Now he's going to challenge the people concerning maintaining the benefits they receive in Christ. Now it appears throughout history this has proved to be very difficult for the church. Believers have, we've never had two successive generations of strong faith. <clears throat> As far as I know, in the history of the world, even counting the first first century, there were never two generations in a row. It there seemed to be a, like a decline. So this is very important that we're talking about here tonight. Even though the resources of the saints have been supplied and all of them have free access to them, and start out with a kind of an awareness of it. It seems like it's exceedingly rare that any ma they maintain a consistent growth and upward movement in these areas. It seems like it's not long before professing Christians have to have crutches and canes and wheelchairs to navigate in life. It's, it's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. Seems to have been so through history, I think. I think God is showing the world something in this. I think, I think he's showing people that even though he provides all the resources, all the access you need, you're going to have to have a lot of him in it before you'll be able to profit. And it's been the tendency of Christianity, particularly since it was institutionalized, to rely on methods and techniques rather than on God, and when that happens, then the resources are neglected. Amen. Yes. The, the church at large thinks, just give me that shot, and then I can take it from here. That's right. I can that's, kind of, that's, kind of yeah. that's one of Satan's ploys. <laughs> see, people should remember that we had one. We had a shot, and we come into the world, and we blew it. See, we live in a society where Proverbs outranks Romans. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the, I'm telling you the truth here. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the average church, Proverbs mm -hmm. upstages Romans. Uh -huh. And Solomon's getting more glory than Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This is happening. Mm -hmm. They don't realize that a greater than Solomon is home here, see? Yeah. This is somehow eluded people. But we can't despair because of this. We can't do it. Jude is showing us a way out of this morass of spiritual lethargy and slothfulness. He's showing us a way out. He's going to end, show us a way out. There, he found the balm in Gilead. He found it and he's passing it on now. 
to the people. Now what he's going to require the people to do in his last verses is equivalent to the dead being raised and impotent people picking up their bed and walk and walking. It's in the spirit it's equivalent to that. What he's going to say, the words are easy to say. <laughs> By doing them. Now that's, that's another matter. It's just the same as Lazarus come forth is in that category. Yeah. It's in that category. Pick up your bed and walk. That's you're going to have to have faith to do it. But this can be done. What he's what he's going to talk about. Amen. And he is going to admonish about the people about what must be done. This this is what's got to be done. Mm -hmm. He's not going to say everybody try your best to do this. I mean that's that's not going to be the kind of exhortation he has at all. We can't neglect this great salvation Amen. and do it with impunity. Yeah. Uh -huh. Won't happen. But people have got to once again get on the highway. If they once again get on the straight and narrow way that leads to life, because they got somehow they got on the broad road. The way of holiness, they got to occupy it again. And it, it will require all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, all their strength. It's going to require all of that. So let's see what uh, this verse 21, that's what we're going to look at tonight. Keep yourselves. Well, that's some introduction right there, huh? Some people disagree with that right off the bat. <laughs> Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. <laughs> Amen. Oh, you can kind of pick up, can you not, on the tone of this? There's a kind of a spiritual tone to this. That this is not just a suggestion or some wise advice. This is something that's got to be done. And those who adopt a simplistic theology will think it's impossible. Keep yourselves. How can we keep ourselves? Well, that's, that's what he's going to tell us. <laughs> Let's look at this word keep, first of all. Keep, keep. Other versions say, and you kind of get some perspective how big this word is. That's why I give you this. What other versions say? Remain in. Keep yourselves safe. Stay always within the boundaries. <laughs> Staying right in the center. And guard and keep. As used here, keep means to attend to carefully, take care of. Let's talk about yourself now. Talk about yourself. Keep one in the state, keep yourself in the state where you ought to be. Attend to it carefully, take care of yourself, guard yourself. Keep one in the state in which he is to observe, reserve, to undergo something. See, you don't just do this and say, Lord, keep me. You know, this. Right. He's able to keep you from falling. I understand you're kept by the power of God through faith, but we're in the equation. Mm -hmm. We are in the equation. Mm -hmm. Keeping yourself, well, that involves attentiveness. You can't be what they say, dozy. You, you, you have to be alert. Keep yourself. It involves personal effort. Got to extend yourself. It involves alertness to danger. You can't be we're going through life like this all the time with your head down and earplugs in, you know. I see kids walking down the sidewalk. They don't even, they don't even know what's going on five feet, a uh, five feet, foot circle around them. They have no idea what's going on. Just walking along like this all the time. That's a generation. We're in a generation. That they live in a little, they live in a little world all by themselves. You can't keeping yourself. You can't do that. You got to lift up your head. Yeah. Be aware of what's around you. Keeping yourselves. <laughs> in other words, you're to stay where God puts you. Amen. Scriptures tell us in First Corinthians one thirty that. Of him, or the idea of him, are you in Christ Jesus, or God put you in Christ? Now, stay there. Hmm? 
when you were born again, you were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Stay there. Amen. Amen. Have been raised up, made to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. Stay there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus put it this way, abide in me. See, it's the same thing. John wrote, abide in him. That's the meaning, that's the sense of keeping that Jude is talking about. In the meantime, Satan, working through your flesh, and it is your flesh, working through your flesh tries to get you out of where God puts you. It's his aim. He knows. He knows what you were before you're in Christ. He knew. He knows what you were. He knows what you were before you were transferred into God, the kingdom of God's dear son. He knows what you were. And if he can get you out of there, you'll be there again. You'll be just as dumb as you ever were. You'll be just as unlearned and ignorant as you ever were. You can't take the smartness you get in Christ and transfer it out into the world. It doesn't work. You'll lose it all. It's only in Christ. Amen. Step out of that circumference and you lost it all. Now, in a way, it's kind of scary, isn't it? So we do have an indispensable ministry to ourselves. Is that a thought? We have a ministry to ourselves. It's like your spirit saying to you, now keep me. Don't be dabbling over there in that. You can almost, you almost hear the, the new man that you're to put on. He'll say, come on, give me a chance. Come on, give me a chance. I don't work in that area where you're headed. Stay where you are, keep yourselves. See, under the law, now here was under the law, we were told, keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. Deuteronomy 17, 40. You keep all, the, keep, keep all these, that's under the law. And we don't say that's bad advice now, but with a higher, higher word now, not to keep all these, it says keep yourselves. How about that? Keep yourselves. When attempting now, <laughs> we're the, keeping yourselves. Here's an indispensable ministry you got to yourself. Yeah. To yourself now. Amen. Reckon yourself to be dead indeed unto sin. Mm -hmm. Minister to yourself. Yeah. Do that. Reckon yourself to be dead indeed unto sin. Yield yourselves as obedient servants. See, it's a ministry, not to yourself. Part of keeping yourself. Yield yourselves to God. Romans 6.13. Yield yourselves as obedient servants. Romans 6.16. And when you attempt to restore a person that has been overtaken in a fault, consider yourself. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Huh? Consider yourself. Yeah. Lest you be tempted. You got a ministry to yourself. You got an obligation to yourself. In Christ Jesus, this is a, like a, this is another word for stewardship. See, we're this isn't like a strange concept. This is what stewardship involves. We're to submit to one another in the fear of the Lord. Or we submit submit ourselves. I'm saying I'm talking about a ministry to yourself. Right. Keep yourself. Submit yourselves to one another. You just say to some brother that's ministering, some sister that's ministering or testifying, I submit to you in this. Let your words fall on me like balm and like anointing oil. Some people, they don't like to do this. See, I don't like that particular speaker. I'd rather listen to submit yourselves to one another. This is your ministry to yourself. Exercise yourself to godliness. Yourself. I'm talking about yourself now. Exercise yourself to godliness. 
In other words, become more godly, more godly, more. You exercise to gain more strength, more godly, more. That's a big favor you can do yourself. Examine yourself. Minister to yourself. We're to know how to behave ourselves in the house of God, which is the church of God, the pillar and ground of the truth. It's necessary to keep keep yourselves pure. What it says. It's a ministry. See, our text said, keep yourselves. So this, this is all exposition of that. Keep yourselves pure. Humble yourselves. See? It's a ministry. <laughs> So a lot of this, in, a lot of this in Scripture. In fact, it's very edifying. Humble yourselves in the Lord. Keep yourselves from idols. See, yeah. see, so it's in there. It's in there, all through Scripture. It's clear that Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ, we have a solemn obligation to ourselves. So Jude builds on this. He says, "Keep, keep yourselves." Yes. And once you really know ourselves besides yes, God. Right. So this is an important ministry because Amen. no one else really knows you like you know yourself. Yes, uh, right. yes. So you're the only one that can keep yourself. Amen. Yeah. Well, it's quite a edifying thing to think about. Yeah, there must be grace available to do this. That's so. right. <laughs> well, whatever God says to do, you never say, how can I do it? You get the grace when they set out to do it. Amen. Until then, you, it's just talk. Yep. Yes, Sister Barbara. Sometimes, whenever we have a focus like this, people might reprimand us saying that we are too inwardly focused or being <laughs> selfish. But when you remember what you brought up with the stewardship, that the seed within us that we're keeping is from God. Amen. This right. is what God has given to us, and so we're keeping that which He's given That's us. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, you won't spend a long time with the Lord before you find out that people are very, very confused about this subject. They, they don't, they, they can't distinguish what you can and can't do. What you ought to do and what you ought not to do. They can't, I suppose none of us could at first very well, but how hard is it for people that murdered Jesus to repent? On sight, immediately. It's like raising from the dead yeah, right. or picking up your bed and walk. Uh -huh. yes. But the moment you set out uh -huh. to do what he said, the grace comes. Amen. That's right. And it doesn't until that. Yes. Right. yes. This, this is the uh, fruit of salvation unto God. He's purchased to himself people. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a people collectively, but that collective is made up of individuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever Paul in Ephesians prayed, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling yeah. and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. This is part of his inheritance. That's right. Yeah. A holy people uh -huh. unto himself. Amen. A righteous nation, a peculiar people. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this is this is um, God working in those that he have he has called. I mean, if if this isn't done, then how is it that we bear the image of Christ? Yes. Christ kept himself separate from sinners. Mm -hmm. He was he was among us, but he wasn't a sinner, and he he denied ungodliness mm -hmm. and unrighteousness. Well, if he he's he's the one that we're being conformed to. When we've been brought in, then we're on the inside and we're keeping the darkness out. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in the end, you talked about us being involved in this. Now, in the end, then, when he says, well done, it will be because we have done well. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. This is done in fellowship with God, of course. Yes. yes. And it is the theology, oh. you might say, the theology of Romans, or our involvement in the theology yeah. of Romans, the obedience of faith. That's yeah. right. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Yes. This uh, keeping yourselves is a prerequisite for ministering to others. Mm. If you haven't first mm -hmm. kept yourself, that's right. then yeah. you can't right. be yeah. used 
I'm reminded of like when you ride an airplane, they before you take off, they go through all the safety <laughs> things, and they they say when the oxygen mask comes down, mm. put it on yourself first, yeah. so yes. that you can be yeah. quick. Yeah. To help yeah. 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 And this is the yeah. same thought here. Yes, yeah. you've got to make you've got to see to your own salvation first, so that you're strong, mm. so that you can help your fellow brethren. Amen. Yeah. Now, now this you'll notice. In passages like this, and one of the ones I mentioned, he never says, "Do this," and then he and then add, "But you won't be able to do this unless you have Christ." See, men put these qualifiers on, but you won't find them in the Scripture. If he says, "Be perfect," he doesn't add. But understand, you're not going to be able to do this unless the Holy Spirit enables you. Well, second, that is true, but this, that defuses the text. Yes, amen. Yeah, right. As soon as you add these qualifiers, but this can only have an if, and it's really, mm -hmm. that defuses the whole text. Amen. Yep. The best thing to do is pick up your bed and walk. Amen. Come out of the tomb of your Lazarus. And at the point you exert yourself, then all of the power. And it doesn't until that happens. You won't, you won't be able to feel like you can do it before you do it. Yeah. First coming to the kingdom of God uh, is we're real sensitive at the time about staying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Early on, we're, oh, yeah. you know, the, our priority is stay in the kingdom of God because yeah. we're so fresh out of the world. So we yeah, know that there's certain things that we're gonna we're gonna make every effort to stay Amen. away from. Yeah. Them because we want to keep ourselves yeah. in, in this kingdom. As Amen. We have Amen. In the strong mindset yes. at the early onset, and I thought that you know, see. We all, like uh, Sister Melissa said, well, you know what you're vulnerable to and, and right. what to keep yourself away, and this text, away from. You see what, what has happened? A religious culture has been developed that allows for this tense sensitivity at the beginning, mm. yeah. but if you stay in that environment, it begins to wane. Uh -huh. yes. That's the kind of religious, this is why it has waned. Uh -huh. This is why it has waned, because the religious culture allows for it to wane, even encourages it to wane, because you can't build an institution on sensitivity. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Am I right? Yes. Well, where should we keep ourselves? <laughs> keep yourselves in the love of God. What? Well, Now there's the place to keep yourself. Keep yourselves in the love of God. We are to assume, we're not to assume we just always will be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the way the love of God is taught, people do assume this. Uh, yes. this, is, this is God's love for us that he's talking about. You understand that? Because you can't love God until you first discern that He loves you. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. you love Him because He first loved you. That's the love we're talking about. God's love for you. It's the love that's been shed abroad in our heart. The love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. See, is this? In other words, this time that Brother Tony just mentioned, the reason that sensitivity was there was the love of God was shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. See? That's why that was there. Now the commission is keep yourself in that. Don't lose that uh, perception. The yeah, longer a person's in Christ, the stronger and more tender he ought to become. You see, the tenderness waning and commitment waning, it should be increasing. That's the way the kingdom operates. But see, Satan has successfully, and God, God using all this, has successfully reared up a substitute church as well as a substitute Christ. Yeah. And you don't have to have this sensitivity to be in his church. 
you know, Jesus referred to the synagogue of Satan. You don't have to have this. You can be dull toward God and be a first high-ranking member. Now someone might say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It says that nothing is able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. How about that? That's nothing external. We're not talking about outside influences. No outside influence can get you out of the love of God. Yes, Brother Justin. Like if I really, really want to go over to some, to like the next door neighbor's house, I really want to go there, and I'm walking towards there, and something comes and pushes me out of the way, and my, but I have, I wanted to go there. Yeah. That's what he's talking about there. It's not. It's like people are, or they're not walking their next door neighbor's house. They're walking the other direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and they're like, well, nothing can separate me from. Yeah. Going over. Well, you can separate. That's right. You've got to teach yourself. See that? That's right. That tells you there's another element here. God has so arranged it so nothing, there's no foe that is superior to your faith. Yeah, amen. My brother, and John, he talked about the same thing about he keeps you in his hand, but it doesn't mean that you can't go out of his hand. That's right. Uh huh. Uh huh. See, Jesus' teaching assumes the person wants to stay. Yeah, amen. That's right. Yeah. But we're in a religious culture where people assume the people want to get out. You know how we all are. This is what people are taught to assume. First chance we have, God tells us to do something. You know how we are. We, but in Jesus' teaching, he didn't assume that. He assumed you wanted to stay in. He's got other words for people who want to get out. But that, uh, that it does, you can see it doesn't contradict God, nothing being able to separate you. That's an outside influence. We're talking here about about yourself. Paul, now, when you were a, a buried in baptism into Christ's death, you were put into the love of God. Nourishing love of God. But that, but now you got to stay there. So, yeah. so two people that had been baptized into Christ and were in the love of God, Paul prayed this for the Thessalonians, and the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, what, he didn't mean they weren't in it. <clears throat> he meant further into the interior, <clears throat> further toward the sinner. Because you were, you were put in, but just at the edge, you just put in, like Jer Jericho was just on the edge of Canaan. You had to get past Jericho to in here at Canaan. So that's, that's why he prayed that. He didn't assume the people were in there, now they're forever. Once you're in the love, you're always in the love. So he didn't, he didn't say that, he, he prayed for them. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. That's what he said. Amen. John 15, 10. If you keep, keep meaning, yeah. here it is, and you, yeah, right. you keep it. Uh -huh. That's what keep means. Mm -hmm. Keep is not synonymous with obey. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. People that keep it will obey it. Yeah. Make no mistake about that. But if you keep my commandments, Jesus said, you'll abide in my love. See, keep yourselves in the love of God. So you know right away that one of the key things is do what Jesus said to do. Yeah, amen. Yeah. If Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me, pick it up. Uh -huh. If you don't, you won't remain in the love. That's right. Brother Judah. You said we're put on the edge and we're told to work toward the interior. I thought of the series of analogies that C.S. Lewis wrote, The Chronicles of Narnia. In the last book, when the people go from old Narnia into new Narnia, they keep reminding themselves further up and further in so that you get away from the previous That's influences. Right. Because right. when you're closer to the edge, 
you, you kind of have a clearer vision of what's beyond the what's beyond the drop-off point, so to speak. That's right. And the further up and further in you go, your 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 sight is sharpened, and your sense of hearing gets better as you go up. Amen. Yeah. The closer you are to the edge, the closer you are to the enemy's arrows. Yeah, that's right. Satan can only shoot his arrows so far. So you stay within his range, and they'll stick in you. Yeah, uh-huh. Yes, Ada. John is known as the, the apostle Jesus loved, the disciple that Jesus loved, mm -hmm. and yet he seemed to have, among all the other disciples, had a keen understanding of what it meant to keep yeah, and to be right. kept. And this, he says something similar there in his first epistle, 2 verse 5, but whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected, perfected in him. him. And that's what yeah. we're... Amen. 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 Yeah. Really given. Yes. Uh, when you're in the love of God, then you're going to have fellowship with God Amen. in what He loves and in what He hates. Amen. Uh -huh. So Amen. if you can maintain this hatred of sin, then you're not going to have a desire to enter into uh -huh. anything that is sin because you're going to hate it. Yeah. Amen. And so this this Amen. is very important to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Remember how Jesus said. Keep my, if you keep my commandments, you abide in my love. Now, Jesus set the standard. Here's what he said. I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Yeah. See, so, he, so he, he, he did this is what he did. Yeah. So we're followers of Christ. Now, that contradicts quite a lot of contemporary theology, but that's the way it is. Keeping yourselves in the love of God involves being followers of God as, as dear children. Yeah. See? As dear children, some people are following God as wayward children. <laughs> yeah. It includes we ought to walk and please God. First Thessalonians four one. Paul put it this way to the Colossian brethren that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. That's abiding. See, that's, that's keeping yourself in the love of God, abiding in the love of God. In our time, there's been an approach to the love of God that contradicts this, seriously contradicts this, this admonition. This does at least suggest that the love is, of God is conditional. Yeah, that, I'm saying it as weak as I can say it. <laughs> does at least, you should, if he says, keep yourselves in the love of God, that's suggesting that it really isn't correct to say no matter what you do, God will love you anyway. That, yeah, that's right. Amen. How could how would he how would you say something like that if that was true? Keep yourselves in the love of God. Yes, amen. Well, I'm fortified what you just said there. Speaking this to a group of believers among mm -hmm. whom apostates have, uh -huh. have yeah. taken some kind of refuge. And so they must keep themselves. Yes. In the love of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Seems to be the whole reason for Jude speaking in the manner that he does is is they were at the they were at the risk mm -hmm. of not being in God's love. That's right. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, brother. Just go ahead. Were true that God loves everybody no matter what you do, it really wouldn't that really wouldn't produce anything in an unbeliever at all. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Why well, well, believe that? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Now keep yourselves in the love of God, but see that's not the end of the matter. This this is in order to something. There's a lot of this type of teaching in scripture. You do something in order that something else might be done. Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there's something to be done while you're in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, we're not maintaining a sleeping and attitude. Once you come in, you don't sit down and go to sleep. We're looking, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Jude reminds us of our, our anticipation to be strengthened and expectancy to be honed to a fine edge. Either you're abiding in your remaining Christ's love 
keepings of the love of God in order that this growth up into Christ can occur. Because if you provoke God, it isn't going to occur. What really counts, you see, is what, what happens after the resurrection of the dead, after the passion away of heaven and earth, uh -huh. after the judgment day. That's what happens then is really yeah, amen. what this is all about. Mm -hmm. Now looking, looking for, it's a strong word, the idea is waiting anxiously. It's not just ho hum, you know. It's straining, trying to right. trying to see if there's a little cloud the size of a man's hand out there. Yeah. You have to look pretty intently to see a cloud like that. Uh -huh. Looking forward to or anticipating, awaiting, awaiting patiently. The Message Bible says, "Keeping your arms open and outstretched, ready. You're ready." Now, right here, we're confronted was something that is rarely found among professing believers, an earnest expectation of better things, mercy. It only takes something that diverts your emphasis to something of the earth and you stop this looking for the mercy. Maybe that you're caught up in national reform. You're right in there, the good old USA. You're right in there. What happens is the future becomes inconsequential. The future God has brought becomes inconsequential. Yes, Brother Ricky. You really will not be looking for the mercy of the Lord until you endeavor to keep yourselves in the love. That's exactly it's, it. Amen. It's as you strain to do that, it accentuates how much you need mercy from Amen. God, and that's what makes you expect it. The inherent weakness of humanity is highlighted by the fact that you'd think that people would know this automatically, but he has to, <laughs> he has to tell them because we've got a treasure, but it's in an earthen vessel. And so he's this, he's, that's why this is hammered on. Looking for the, what do we look for? The mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, quite often we're, we're admonished to look for the coming of the Lord. And that, that is in order, certainly. But here we're admonished to look for mercy. Yeah. Now, I suppose that could be equated with looking for the grace that will be brought to us at the coming of the Lord. First Peter 1.13, but my own view is that's not what he's talking yeah. about here. This is mercy that's revealed in Christ's intercession, his mediation, the new covenant, his shepherding, his teaching, so forth. If we look with a penetrating view at the circumstances of life, and sometimes some circumstances make you weep, but if you look at them closely, there's a speck of mercy in there. Amen, that's right. There's some mercy to be seen. Yes. If you look at it right, you'll uh -huh. see it. You'll see there's been a remnant in there. Uh -huh. I haven't perished. This thing's been working together for my good. Look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. There'll be 7,000 people didn't bow the knee to Baal. Ah, they'll be there they'll be, during a cri during a crisis. There'll be some that didn't bow to Nebuchadnezzar's image. They'll be there. There'll be some that, in spite of the times, they spoke off on one with another. See, yes. look for the mercy. Yes. You can look at the circumstances. Well, look at what things are going down the drain. Really bad, but look for the mercy. Yes. Look for the mercies, look for a remnant, look for a tender soul, look for someone that's got the mark. Look for them. Look hard, you'll see that there's some saints out there that are being kept by the power of God. Through faith, that's look for the mercy. It'll help you to survive the circumstances, just to see this. See that no man's able to pluck you out of the Father's hand, that's a mercy. During crisis, think of this, this is getting pretty bad. I mean, the sodomites are taking over. The government's falling apart. The economy is toppling on disaster. 
There's wars and rumors of wars. Look for the mercy now, Amen. but no man can pluck me out of his hand. See, Amen. look for the, look for the mercy. Know that the mercy, by a mercy, by mercy, iniquity is purged. That's Proverbs 16, 6. Look for the mercy. Today, during all of this difficulty in the world, somebody's iniquities have been purged. Amen. Somewhere around this world, probably on every continent, and maybe even every city, somebody's iniquities have been purged. Look for the mercy. And the psalmist said, he shall send forth his mercy and his truth. So he sends out wherever truth is, your twin sister of mercy is right there. Look for the mercy. Look for it. Look for mercy like some of those people in Jerusalem look for redemption. See? Yeah. Remember Anna went out and she heard about the Christ child, told everyone's looking for redemption. Look for mercy that way. Don't be a griper, be a looker. There was a lot of faith among the, there was not a lot of faith among the Jews. But God told Ezekiel now, I told these angels to walk through Jerusalem, which, is, which had really gone down, mm -hmm. and find the people that sigh and cry. Mm -hmm. Look for the mercy. Yeah. Find the people that sigh and cry because of the abominations. See, look for the mercy. You can see what I'm saying. Amen. So in the midst of a great falling away and national moral decline, political corruption, threats of war, and growing violence, there's a choice to be made. What am I going to look for? Am I going to look for garbage? I'm going to look for mercy. Amen. Yes. That look for mercy can truly fulfill the Lord's will for us in giving thanks in all things. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it's there, see? Yeah. In decadent Israel, there was there was an Amos, and so forth. Yes, Sister Jake, Sister Ada. That, that phrase, looking for, it fits so perfectly with uh, keep. Keep uh -huh. yourself, That's look right. for, Amen. because he doesn't quite use the word hope, even though hope is there. It's uh -huh. that expectant anticipation, such as in the promises of God being fulfilled. But it also has this implication of giving, giving this access to yourself to receive something yeah. within yourself. Mm -hmm. Look for it. In other words, it's it's being delivered to us. The mercy of God is being. Yeah. We're ex we are accepting. That's right. The mercy and it is doing its good work Amen. in us. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for it. Yes. Uh, out externally, but it is very much a truth in our hearts that we experience the mercy of God. Amen. You you actually profit from mercy that was given to somebody else. Uh -huh. yes. yes. Yes, Brother Tony. It's exclusively of Christ's ministry. Yes. That's right. It's like find it's find this mercy. It's like yeah. this mercy's out there. Look for it. Look yeah. for it. He's Amen. offering it. Take it. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's a good. It's a good thing to see. That's yeah. good. Uh, this is. Uh, uh, I think it's also comprehended when Christ taught his disciples to pray, "Lead us not into temptation, or testings, but deliver us from evil." See, that's a mercy that even Amen. though evil is Amen. around, we can be delivered. From Amen. It. Yes. And that, Amen. That doesn't have to be just external either. Yeah. Amen. That's good. You're in a temptation. Uh -huh. There's a way of escape. Right. Yes. Mercy gave yeah. that way. Of Amen. Escape. Yes. That's right. You see, see how broad that is, Sister Sarah? Look for mercy and the Lord will give it to you. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yeah, amen. You notice, too, that when your eye is trained to look for mercy, <laughs> the circumstances will tend to look yes. different. Yes. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Incidentally, that word for keep is also talking, it's like guard, you know? Uh-huh. Your right. eye, you're keeping, That's a, right. you're keeping a watch. That's you're right. Guarding. 
Mm. You know, there's some pictures out there that you got to look at them a certain way, and you can see something hidden in them. But I was thinking, this mercy, you know, you gotta, you gotta be walking in the spirit. Oh, you you yeah. gotta know the ways of the Lord. But when you do, you, somebody's already said you can pick up on it. You can, you can see there's a sense in which this thing could have gone horribly wrong, but it didn't, yeah. and you can know why. <laughs> now, to show you the effect. Looking for mercy, what the effect it has on you. So let's say your name is like Robert Cobb, and you've had one of those days, you know. And all of a sudden, Brother Tom walks in the door. That's mercy. Tom got some mercy, and Jesus said, "Carry that mercy over to my servant." But if you're not looking for it, uh -huh. see, you'll just treat it as a neighbor come over to the house. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. Look for the mercy. You believe me when I tell you this, brother, yeah. that when you're down in the dump, so to speak, and you would be crawling on your on their belly mm -hmm. in discouragement, if you look, God's going to send some mercy to you from some person. They're going to enter into your life. They're going to have a word for you, or they're going to testify of some triumph they've had, and but you got to look for it. You got to look for that. Amen. Be wise to live to be used. In that's right. Well. That's yeah. right. Mm. Look for mercy, and any. That's not the end of the matter either. You notice how there's there's always this unto 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 him. Look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. The eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's the administrator of the kingdom. Uh -huh. yeah. He's the one that doles it out. That's right. And several epistles begin, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. God sends it through yes. Christ Jesus. Amen. And you look for the mercy of, of our Lord Jesus Christ unto mm -hmm. eternal life. In other words, when you look at mercy... You look on down the road, there's eternal life. Get, uh -huh. <laughs> you see eternal life Amen. That's right. back there. Some other versions read to eternal life or looking for eternal life through the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ or who will give you eternal life so forth. The idea is you, you become more aware of eternal life when mercy is in your eye. Yes, amen. Yeah. Unto is used in scripture means towards or or four, or in order to, this is this is the bridge that gets you over this trial to there. Amen. Eternal life's over there. You're over here. Where you had to have mercy. But if you look for the mercy, it'll, you'll be able to cross over to the other side. Eternal life. Yeah, that's why mercy is given. Mercy is given because the end of this project is concluding with eternal life. Yes. That's where we're all headed. Eternal Life, not happy life on earth, eternal life. The only way we can keep ourselves in the love of God is to find the mercy. Yeah. Look yeah. at the mercy. That's the way you keep yourself in the love of God. And you keep yourself in the love of God by the mercy of Christ so you can get eternal life. Right. Unto eternal life. The New Living Translation did a pretty good job handling this verse. I don't know if it was an accident or what, but they did. If I can find it here. Oh, yes. And await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will bring you to eternal life. In this way, you will keep yourself safe in God's love. Amen. That, that, that's pretty good. They did a pretty good job of that. Must have been a kingdom man on the committee or something. That's, you keep yourself, see, uh -huh. keep yourself in the love of God. That's the man. How am I going to keep myself? Look for the mercy. Uh -huh. yeah. That's in order to eternal life. Yeah. And that mercy will tell you, stay, stay here, stay in this love, stay in this love, stay here. Because it's going to end up over there in eternal life. Oh, I love the thought. <coughs> See, you can't live thinking, I can hardly wait till I get out of the world. 
and get out of this vile body. Because actually, that's going to happen to everybody. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Everybody's going to get out of the world and get out of this body. That's going to happen to everybody. So you, we, is what, we're, what, we want, what we're going to obtain, not what we're going to leave behind, what we're going to obtain. See, look, that's the behind. You don't, you're not looking behind. Yeah. Yeah. Remember Lot's wife, we don't look behind. Yeah. We don't look back there what we were. We look ahead. And when you see this mercy, it's like they, that mercy has like a drawing, drawing power. And you lift up your head and you see eternal life and that's worth everything. Amen. That's worth everything to obtain eternal life. The thing that drives you is what you're going to obtain. I'm going to obtain a new body. I'm going to be free from this competition within. I'm going to obtain a new body, I'm going to obtain a new environment, I'm going to obtain a new ministry. You see the mercy? The mercy clears up eternal life for you. You stay in the love of God, and now you begin making preparations for the future. Now, I, I'm sure we all know this, but let's think about it a little bit, what eternal life is. Jesus, after a manner, defined it. He said, this is eternal life, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true. Well, this is, this is John 17, 3. Let me give that first. This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ have now sent. Know here means like Adam knew Eve. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's, it's, that, yeah. it's that kind of know. Yeah. It's an intimate know, an involvement with. Amen. See? And in John, he said much the same thing. He said, we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that ye may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, that is, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. So eternal life is not like living forever or never dying, although that we are going to live forever and never die. But that's not what eternal life is. Longevity is not the point of eternal life. Eternal life actually has more to do with what a person is experiencing mm -hmm. yeah. than how long he's, see? Yeah. Eternal life is knowing God, involvement in God. You are just as alive mm -hmm. as you have involvement with God. Amen. Just that, if you just have a little involvement, you're just barely alive. You may be, you may be on the life support, you know. There's some believers that appear only to be on life support. It's just the prayers of some other people keep them alive. Yeah, uh -huh. Yes, go ahead. I am the life. The life. Yeah. That's it. He's the only source of life. And that what you were saying, that you're just as alive as you are. Amen. To him. He is the life. If, if, without him, there is no life. You are where I'm sure that a lot of people have no idea what God is like. They don't know the ways of God. They don't know how God thinks. They don't know what His purpose is. They don't know what He loves or what He hates. Who He's drawn to, who He's repelled by. They have no idea about this. Now there were some people in Corinth that didn't know God. And Paul wrote to them about it. He said, there are some among you that have not the knowledge of God. He said, I speak this to your shame. It is shameful for a church member to not know God. And yet you will be hard pressed to find a church member that does know God. Put it to the test, just put it to the test. There's some people that are good people I after the world's definition, but they, they just are ignorant of God. So they swallow down these misconceptions that are taught about God. They just swallow them down. They don't know God. See, David, Moses, they knew God. So when they saw somebody do something that didn't set with God, they, boy, they were afraid. 
they saw someone that did something that pleased God, they were glad. Yeah. See, because they knew God. The point Judah's making, and it's a wonderful, powerful point, is nothing is more important right now mm -hmm. than keeping yourself in the love of God. Amen. That's the most important assignment you have. Amen. That will make you valuable to other people who are keeping themselves in the love of God. You will become a resounding exhortation to people that aren't doing that. You'll be a point of light as someone has had some thoughts about the Lord will be drawn to. See, this is very, very important. Keep yourself in the love of God. Not keeping others in that love. Keeping yourself in that love. It is possible to be so concerned about others that you forget about yourself in this in the regard of our text when it says that you uh, prefer others that doesn't mean that you forget about keeping yourself in the love of God it means your personal interests your personal preferences things that bring like a more immediate benefit to you, you're willing to forfeit that for others. Above yourself, but you can't afford to put anyone above God. That's right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now when you, once you recognize mercy, look for the mercy. Now look for the mercy. Once you see it and you recognize it, and you get, you get a good dose of it yourself, you will be able to say what Jacob said, I am not worthy of the least of all thy mercies. That's the conclusion you'll come to. The mercy of God is so great, you'll never say, well, I sure deserve that. I'm, I had that mercy coming. You'll say, I'm not worthy of the least. I have no idea what, least, what the least of the mercies are, but the least of the mercies are better than anything the world has. To offer and you'll confess you'll confess now after you've been in the Lord for a while I've been doing really well you'll say now I don't consider myself to have apprehended yeah, right. not yet I got to keep looking for the mercy Amen. I'm pressing toward the mark I'm not there yet see yeah. yes. I, that's, that's what keeps you looking for the Amen. for the mercy in so doing, when you're pressing toward the mark, it's like you're keeping yourself in the love of God. Because God already told us what kind of people He loves, the kind of people He's drawn to, people of a humble and contrite spirit, people that love His Son. And He's Jesus said to His disciples, The Father loves you because you love Me and believe I came out from God. Well, that tells you what God thinks of people like that, see? So keep yourself in the love of God, you will be guarding yourself. See, there's a like there's an assignment we been to guard ourselves. We're kept by the power of God through faith, but there's there's some smaller skirmishes that we've got to keep ourselves. He'll protect you against the large ones, you know, where you're he'll protect, but you you keep yourself in in the right field keep yourself on the right stay in Jerusalem don't don't, don't leave Jerusalem yes. stay there when you get to the promised land stay uh -huh. this is the manner of the kingdom because when we get to heaven like we're going to stay there yeah, amen. that's the manner of the kingdom it begin it begins by learning how to stay here yes. learning how to abide here is where we learn how to do it yes. and everything you need to do it now is supplied in Christ, but the key is looking for the mercy. Yes. Amen. And uh, what better place to find mercy than a place that looks chaotic and a lot of sin going on? Uh, that's yeah. <laughs> that's the kind of place that there's trickle of mercy here, and a bushel of it here. It's here. It's around us. Amen. But it, uh, I encourage you to yes. to look for it. It was it was a. It, this was a challenge to my spirit. I, I kind of caught this thing and part way through it. I said, yeah, this is good stuff. Look for the mercy. Yeah. Don't be cast down because of circumstances that have happened. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're bad, but they're worse than you even think they are. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was thinking that when you look
This mercy, this is where uh, the Lord administers this peace that passes yeah. all understanding. Uh -huh. That's Amen. right. Amen. That's right. Yes. In the end, he's going to have a kingdom full of people that are able to identify mercy. That's right. Yeah. Mercy. And every time he gets, I'm not worthy of this, yeah. but I got it anyway. Amen. I'm going to thank God. I'm going to serve him. I mean, let's face it, we're like, what else could you do? What else can you offer God aside from your life? You can offer him your money or your house or your car or your own offspring. What are you going to offer him? Your life, your life is all you can really give him. And if you see his mercy, you'll do it without hesitation. Keep yourself in love of God. And if you have an additional word you'd like to add, Brother Aaron? Well, the best kind of, of refraining is always when it's fueled by the desire to obtain something. And no, nobody's very good at, at keeping away from something that they, that they really down deep, they really want. But when, the, when there's a desire to obtain something, then there's a, there'll be a, a zealous, aggressive, uh, refraining from whatever competes with that, and, and, it, and it's and, and refraining is it's never that's ne that isn't the main issue when there's a desire to obtain. So a, a desire for something is is very is very productive and actually is is like uh, creative in its in its yes. in its uh, <laughs> its method or its modes. You know, like somebody that. Uh, these quite you mentioned earlier uh, that it's just not it's not the, a kingdom way to to respond with, well how do I keep myself in the love of God and, and how do I walk by faith and and need a manual a punch list you know for everything yeah. when it, when a person has is driven by a, a desire for things above and a desire for God himself that desire actually teaches you yeah. the, the the mechanics so to speak or the or the details. the details, and you don't have a lot of those in in the Amen. New Testament scripture, Amen. because yeah. the the desire and the presence of, of the, the Spirit of God, that this it makes things makes things yeah. happen. Uh -huh. I've been provoked many times recently by what men do with natural resources, even oh. with without the Spirit of God, without the grace yeah. of God, right. what people are capable of doing. It's like it's like a a, a testimony against bad religion. That's right. Of what people can do without grace, without hope, this this should should be provoking to what, what can be done with grace and with hope. Mm -hmm. yeah, those people set out to build a tower to heaven, and God said they'll do it if we don't stop it. Brother Aaron mentioned a punch list. That would make us too narrow. Uh, That's right. To, but, well. Amen. You would you would be you'd restrict yourself to looking at only things on that list, yeah. where the the mercies of God come to us in so many ways. When you're looking for the mercy, you're looking in every place. I mean, it's like a it's like setting your face in a certain way, so you're not missing it. Yeah. That you may get fifty, a hundred mercies in a day. You don't want to just be able to recognize one of them. Amen. You want to be able to see every time. The Amen. Lord extends mercy to you. Things small and small, things great. Mm -hmm. Just like Brother Jonathan's Thanksgiving for that mercy of relief from That's the right. heat. Uh -huh. well, we're not, we're not just serving God for that sort of thing, oh. but we don't want to rob Him of His glory. Yeah. Right. This is part yes. of the glory of God, that He's merciful. Amen. And that uh -huh. I'm thinking in the world to come, how that we won't have a need for mercy in the same capacity we yeah. do here. Mm -hmm. But we will be a people able to recognize that characteristic of God Amen. without yes. being, without having to suffer some kind of need to see it. Amen. We'll be able to glorify him for being Amen. merciful. Amen. Yeah, other people experienced what Jonathan did and probably called it luck. Go ahead. What I was going to talk about because I'm glad to see that this was demonstrated earlier today. Yeah. Because it's kind of, people think it's odd that you find comfort from a severe thunderstorm. But the thunderstorm's what gave me shade and cool weather. And even when I 
I said, well, that wasn't so bad, was it? You know, the storm, and someone's like, yeah, we just got the outside border of it. <laughs> How was that all? He was looking for the mercy seat. Yeah, that's right. I saw it, too. See, and that, uh -huh. I mean, this is more extensive than I've been able to communicate. Brother Jonathan wouldn't be able to see the provision of God unless he was first provoked in that direction by uh, Brother Ricky saying, sure, yeah. remember, God is able yeah. to lift a head and has to see what God can do. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yes, Mr. Nicky? This, this verse rem reminded me very much of the account of Ruth. Oh, I, I remember what Boaz said to her. He said, Here is now not, my daughter, go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here, my dear. fast by my maidens. So she was, as long as she stayed in his field, she was protected from harm from other people. She was sustained. She was able to glean her food and able to give drink of his water. He told, he gave her permission to take of all of that. And it says, then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said to him, why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldst take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? Yeah. And he told her, he's, he knew how she left her mother and her yeah. father and lands and came to know people that she didn't know before. I was considering how we have left all to That's follow right. Christ. That's and right. as long as we stay in His love, He's going to provide everything we need to um, sustain us. We've got to stay in His field, like His yeah. field. It's his Jesus love. said we'll have more. That's right. Yeah. He said we'll have more. Amen. You only had one father, now you can have a lot of fathers, Amen. mothers. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes, Mr. Aiden. Well, first we can read it that you keep yourselves in the love of God so that you can look for the mercy, but you can also read that that this is how we keep ourselves in the love that's of God. It, that's the point. That's that we point. look for the mercy. It reminds me of when Jesus forgave uh, a woman of her sins and said that her sins, which are many, are forgiven for she loves much. Yes. Right. And so, but by and that's connected with that what you're speaking of that we're aware really the ones who know God best have an intimate knowledge of his mercy uh -huh. See, the, know the, his mercy the mercies all are within the per perimeter of the love of God yeah. so if you keep yourself in the love of God that is the only place you can find mercy yeah, amen. Amen. Right? <laughs> yes brother Ricky uniquely experienced by men Oh, yeah. uh -huh. You remember the, the Ark of the Covenant, that covering yeah. seat over there? Remember the angels were looking down toward the mercy seat. Okay. Because this is one of the things that was that was not known by angels because it wasn't experienced by angels. So when God expends mercy and we receive from it, it's it's demonstrating something to the angels that they can understand about God. Amen. And so we're we're giving glory to God by by not missing the opportunity to receive from the mercy, and then for the angels to see the impact yeah. that that mercy has upon men. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Several scriptures have occurred to me. It says it's by His mercies that we're not that consumed. consumed yeah. He causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust, so that mm -hmm. even even those that are not in, uh, in in covenant with God, they experience some kind of mercy, yeah. because the Lord is 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 gentle by nature also. But but then you you think of uh, the Scripture says the the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. See, there is no mercy outside of God. Amen. All mercy yes. can be attributed to God. Amen. And no matter what level you experience it at, yeah. uh, whether it's a general mercy that's provisional mm -hmm. to, the, to the world, or whether it's the mercy specifically to the mm -hmm. people of God as His own children, yeah. it's all of God. Amen. There is no mercy yeah. to be sought somewhere else. Amen. We're not going to get it from Satan. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we're close there. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. We accept this exhortation 
to keep ourselves in the love of God and look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank, we thank you in Jesus' name that you've directed us in this manner through Jude. We see the sense of it, and by your grace we intend to do it. In Jesus' name, amen.